Hey, my name is Jackson Rudolph. I'm here for the MCAA 530 class, and today I'm gonna to be talking about the importance of resilience. Introduction to resilience. So this, these are some of the questions that I plan on um, answering for you today during the presentation. What is resilience? How does resilience impact our lives? How important is it for a coach to be resilient? And how can I become resilient? First off, we gotta ask, what does it mean to be resilient? The American Psychological Association defines resilience as the process of adapting well in the face of adversity, trauma, th uh, tragedy, threats, or significant sources of stress. I personally like to think about it in a little bit more simple ways. How can you bounce back and recover from a bad situation? Um, will we be defined by our problems? You know, can we can we uh, find the grit to overcome those uh, those obstacles? We face bad situations all the time. But what do we do when we encounter those situations? How do we view obstacles in our life? Are they gonna stop you? Will they inspire you? Will they change you? Resilient people uh, can view obstacles as an opportunity to prove to themselves and to others that they can overcome those obstacles. Whenever someone tells me I can't do something, that makes me wanna do it even more. So being able to use those obstacles as a way to kind of inspire yourself. All right, the resilient Michael Jordan. Um, I'm from Chicago, so any chance that I have to, uh, to talk about Michael Jordan, I'm going to. Um, he attributed his vast successes to his many failures. One of the quotes he has is that failure made him try harder. Um, he was cut from his high school basketball team. He missed 26 game-winning shots, and still to this day, he's considered the greatest basketball player of all time. Um, and no one really remembers him for his failures, right? I, can, I can't think of a single one of his 26 missed game-winning shots, but I can, I can think of all of his game winners, that's for sure. So um, no one really remembers him for those failures. The resilient Beth, uh, Bethany Hamilton. So Bethany Hamilton, she lost her arm while she was surfing. Um, this was from a shark attack. Um, and when she was recovering uh, in the hospital, she told herself two things. She made two promises. Uh, she would not moan about her misfortune, which is kind of a backbone of resiliency. Um, and she would get back on the surfboard. And she did. Within 26 days um, after the amputation, uh, she was surfing again. So 26 days. That's pretty impressive. She's currently a top 50 surfer in the world. So she was able to overcome all of those obstacles, the obstacle of um, having to kind of start over, the resilience of overcoming certain frustrations, um, and have it with having to deal with a new uh, disability. Uh, fun fact, she was also the inspiration for the 2011 movie Soul Surfer. Applying resilience to coaching and administration. Um, in terms of uh, resilience and coaching and administration, confidence, um, uh, having that resilience is going to be is going to give you confidence and the ability to overcome hardship, right? If you've overcome hardship before and you've uh, gained that resilience, um, you're going to have the confidence and your ability to do that again. Um, creating an optimistic mindset is always going to be important for um, from a coach's perspective. Um, being able to mitigate detrimental effects from stressors, stressors like injury, performance slip ups, uh, pressure to perform, um, you know, a lot of different kinds of conflicts. Um, being able to kind of mitigate those stressors is something that resilience will give you as a coach. Um, it's not something that you're born with, which is important to understand. It is something that you develop. It's a trait that you develop over time by putting yourself into certain positions. And in this next slide, um, we're going to go over how you can develop that resilience. Here we go. Coaching and becoming resilient. How does one become resilient? Um, uh, I like to start off by developing a growth mindset and by developing a growth mindset, there's different kind of aspects that go into that, right? So being willing um, and open to new ideas and uh, new experiences is going to be important for that growth mindset. Um, identifying personal motivations. So asking yourself things like, why is this important to me and what is important to me um, is going to be helpful for that as well. Um, and also anticipating setbacks and realizing that setbacks are going to be a part of the process, right? For every three steps forward, you might take one step back and that's okay. Um, also developing support systems is going to be an important aspect uh, as well. Um, so being able to foster certain relationships, uh, especially from a coach's perspective, fostering those relationships with athletes, uh, family, with friends, um, and, and that way they'll be there for you to help when that support is needed. So making sure that those relationships are well taken care of. 
Um, also evaluating setbacks. So we mentioned setbacks as a development um, or for a, for a growth mindset, um, but making sure that you're evaluating those setbacks with a realistic perspective, right? And being constructive while evaluating those setbacks. So thinking about things that can be controlled, like how you prepare your team for a game versus things that can't really be controlled, like the weather being really bad. Um, so in terms of evaluating those setbacks, uh, really being constructive and, and, and honest with yourself. Um, also life balance is gonna be uh, helpful in terms of um, becoming resilient. So balanced lifestyle can foster resilience in a lot of different ways. Um, the big one is gonna be, it's gonna be that distraction again from those negative stressors that we talked about before. Things like injury, performance slip ups, um, you know, pressure to perform, conflict, things like that. Um, having that life balance and realizing that your life doesn't revolve around this one thing is gonna be helpful to help kind of mitigate um, those negative stressors, right? And that'll help foster resiliency. All right, resilience in leadership. Um, I found a great quote from our textbook, Practical Ethics in Sports Management. Um, it says, good leaders liberate their followers uh, and the followers become better people for the experience. Good leaders influence people to work uh, enthusiastically towards goals that benefit the common good. Um, I really like that quote just because it's saying one of the things is leaders can use resilience to liberate their followers, right? They can liberate them from things like fear. Um, I think that's a good example for Bethany Hamilton. Uh, she is definitely a leader um, and she can uh, help liberate people that follow her from certain fears, right? If, if she's not afraid to get back on the surfboard, 26 days after being attacked by a shark, um, there really isn't a lot we should be afraid of also. My personal example of resilience, I played uh, soccer for the Chicago Fire Development Team in Illinois. Um, during my college, uh, my first year of college, I fractured my tibia and my fibula, and uh, I knew I wasn't gonna be able to play again, so I had to be resilient in order to find a way where I could uh, still be involved in my passion uh, constructively. Um, and I didn't let the injury define me, which was really important. I knew that I'd have to pivot, but I knew that I could still be a part of the thing that I was passionate about, which for me, it was soccer. Uh, brings me to a great picture. Will you break or adapt? And you can see this tree blowing in the wind. Resilience in the Bible. I like to use uh, John uh, passage 16, 33, where it says, I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. So you're gonna face things, right? In the world you will have tribulation, you're gonna face obstacles that are gonna slow you down, but don't worry, through me, through God, I have overcome the world. So data. Data on sports and resiliency. A grounded theory of psychological resilience in Olympic champions is a study done by Fletcher in 2012. Basically, uh, the, the results of the study indicate that numerous psychological factors protect the world's best athletes from the potential negative effects of stressors by influencing their challenge appraisal and their metacognitions. Um, these processes promote uh, facilitative responses that precede optimal sports performance. Basically, what that's saying is um, in this quantitative study, um, that the highest echelon of gold medal and Olympic athletes are going to put themselves in the correct mindset. And you can see the processes of promoting uh, facilitative response is putting themselves in a positive mindset in order to um, uh, overcome the obstacle that they view, also known as challenge appraisal and metacognitions. So conclusion, the ability to be resilient can be, have a vastly positive impact on our lives, both inside and outside of sports? Do we view obstacles as a barrier that stops us from achieving our goals or as a buoy that can raise us to new heights? All right, here are my references. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and have a good day.